your favorite girl, Tyler Nicole Taylor, TNT, If You Love Me. Welcome back to my channel. And if you just so happen to stumble upon me because you saw the title of this video and you decided, hmm, that seems interesting, let me give it a click. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So, this video is, yeah, it's, a, it's another story time. Let's just say that. Um, it's not always happy and it's exciting and some of my other topics, but this is real life. This is something that happens and it's definitely something that happens to couples and you have to manage and you have to deal with it. And since that's what we do here on this channel, which is talk all things love, relationships, and everything in between, this seemed like the right thing to, talk, to discuss, mainly because this is my story and I do feel as though there are a lot of women out there that can relate to this. So, if you clicked on this video because you thought this might be something you can relate to or you might be possibly going through this right now, let's get right into it. <sighs> okay, so if you watched my life update video last week, then you will know that I revealed that I was pregnant. Yes, um, I got an overwhelming, well, for me, because mm, I have a small following, so, <laughs> but I did get a lot of support, and um, what I really appreciated were the people that watched the whole video, so if you got a chance and had the time and space and opportunity to watch the whole video, which I know it was kind of long, I know, I mean, I had a lot of updates, y'all, um, <laughs> Then you would have also learned that I revealed that I actually miscarried um, this year. So, yeah, I was pregnant. Now I'm not. So, yeah, I briefly touched on this in my video last week, but we're going to go a little more in depth. So I found out in April that, well, more so like towards the end of April, that I was pregnant and... Um, John and I, who is my fiance, we were super excited. He was also my fiance at the time, <laughs> by the way. We were super excited because we were newly engaged. I had just moved to California and it was just like, wow, all of this is really happening. You know, we knew both of our parents were like really excited to have grandkids. So he already has a son and my parents, I'm the oldest and they don't have any grandkids and grandparents just love grandkids that's just something that they love so we were really excited really stoked like yeah this is it we're doing it we're grown-ups right so now because I have this irrational fear of not being able to um carry to term or even conceive sometimes and <laughs> I don't know where it came from um I really have no idea why I think that but it's always been something that since I was in my 20s like early 20s that I was very concerned about and I've, I've had several doctors lady doctors and none of them have ever told me that there is an issue <laughs> with anything going on down there so yeah that's what makes it irrational and with that being something you know fear that I've shared with John before um we wanted to try to wait until we were out of the first trimester before we tell everybody, you know, um, because we didn't want to get everybody's hopes up. As I especially didn't want to since I was already feeling away. To be very transparent, I am four years older than John. So I'm 35. He'll be 31 in a couple of weeks. And um, so a lot, a lot of times that has a lot to do with it, too. So maybe it's just, you know, societal stigma of, being, you know, in your 30s or mid 30s or even early 40s trying to conceive and have a baby for the first time. Maybe those are some of the things that have always been kind of scary to me. Maybe I always knew I wasn't going to have my first child until I was in my 30s. So maybe that's why I was thinking that way. I have no idea, but so we didn't really want to tell everybody right away, obviously. We wanted to kind of wait until it was safe and we knew for a fact that we were pregnant but because my brother was coming into town to celebrate my birthday with me we knew that we had to at least let our parents know and our and our siblings know because usually how we like to celebrate is with 
you know, spirits and wines and champagnes and stuff like that. And those are things that you shouldn't be partaking in when you're, when you know you're pregnant. And at this point, I knew I was pregnant because my brother was coming to visit me for my birthday. He actually came um, about four days prior to my birthday. So he came the weekend before my actual birthday because my birthday was in the middle of the week. And um, so that meant we had to tell them before my birthday, before we got the confirmation, before we did the ultrasound, we had no choice but to tell our parents. And it was like, obviously, we can't just tell my parents and not tell his parents. Obviously, we can't tell our brothers and not tell our parents because our moms are not going to stand for that, okay? So we had to just let everybody know before they got here. And so we did that. Um, had the weekend. It was great. Had some good sibling time, um, if you don't know. John's brother and my brother are best friends, so it was just all of us siblings having a grandioso time that weekend. I want to say I probably took at least four pregnancy tests before my birthday. No, actually, it was more than that. Y'all, I took about eight pregnancy tests. I just really wanted to be sure that I was pregnant. Like, I was super, like I said, you know, I was really concerned. I really didn't believe it. When I first found out that I was pregnant, um... I was living my life, you know, I was prior to that, I was still drinking and hanging out and doing my thing. So I had no idea that I was pregnant. I was expecting my period to come any day now. And when it didn't come, that's when I realized, okay, something's really up. Like it's been a whole week. And that's when I found out, um, I took the first pregnancy test, got the pregnant result, thought it was, was a fluke. Um, and then as time progressed and I actually started to embrace the fact that I'm pregnant and like, of course, once I found, once I got the first pregnancy test result, because I wasn't 100%, even though I wasn't 100% sold, I still was like, you know what? Just in case this is real, just in case this is a fluke, I'm going to just stop drinking and everything right now. So, that's what I did. Life goes on, you're doing your normal routine, and, you know, at the time, John and I were going through growing pains with living together, little tips here and there, you know what I'm saying? You know, those little small fights that don't amount to anything, but you still can be cool afterwards, like directly afterwards, you're like, you don't need no time to cool off. Like, we, was, we had those, because again, like I said, we were trying to figure out how to live with each other, really. Um, and I was getting some bleeding here and there, and it was kind of, you know, concerning, because it's like, okay, it was really good. It was really, really good. I was getting like, you know, and I was reading, of course, you know what happens when you're going through something. The first thing you want to do is search it on the internet. So, yeah, I'm searching it on the internet, trying to figure out, okay, what's really good? Like, what does this mean? And just, you know, taking it all with a grain of salt because remembering that this is the internet. I'm not a doctor. Nine times out of ten, these people aren't doctors. And even if they are, that, I mean, what they're telling me is not necessarily specific to my case because they haven't thoroughly examined me. So, examined me. Sorry. And I'm still reading this stuff, getting myself freaked out because that's what happens. That's what you do when you try to self-diagnose on the internet. So I'm like reading everything about bleeding during pregnancy and I'm seeing everything that says ectopic pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy. And I'm like, what the heck is that? So I look it up. And once I read what it is, my gosh, I was freaking out. And then when I re when I read how to what they do to remedy an ectopic pregnancy, I was freaking out even more. So even though I was bleeding, like at first it was light, light colored, then it started getting darker, and it started feeling like it started seeming kind of like a period, but it was so off and on that it wasn't like my period. Like it would be bleeding one day, then no bleed, then bleeding for two days. The next week, then nothing. One day, I um, started experiencing clots. And they were big clots, but normally on my period, I get clotting. But then I had to remember, you're not on your period. Like, you're pregnant and you're having these clots. And this is a bit concerning. And the funny thing is, that like two days before I started passing clots, I read something that said, well, as long as you're not passing clots, then you're probably not miscarrying. You're probably okay. Because that was the other, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, that was the other um, 
symptoms to bleeding. So it was either miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy. And of course, I zoned in on the scariest one. Worst case scenario, I'm thinking, if I'm miscarrying, then at least it's most likely not an ectopic pregnancy. So that means there's a bright side to this because that means I can try again. Like we can try again. The last thing I want is for this particular pregnancy to be ectopic and then they end up having to cut my stuff and then I may not really ever be able to have kids. And then my fears, my worst fears will have come true. So um, what I realized was my last period, and this is, I don't know, is this a TMI alert? My last cycle was like in February. Yeah, my last cycle was in February. So I was able to um, squeeze in a doctor's appointment um, at the beginning of May. We had already set the appointment for um, my first doctor's appointment for them to confirm. Because like I said, I had already taken about six to eight pregnancy home pregnancy tests before I even went to the doctor, okay? And when I got there, of course, they do their tests, but they do the normal, you know, pee in a cup and do their little testing that way. Um, I didn't get any blood taken at that point. It was just the, you know, first visit, getting to know the office, filling out the paperwork, all of that, you know, all your background information, your spouse's background information, if, you know, you have all that stuff, um, what's your, what your health conditions are, all of that. You know, that's what it is. just kind of that kind of thing. And then they recommend, like, prenatal um, pills and stuff like that, which that was really cool because they gave me samples. So that was dope. And they told me where to go get the name brand ones versus um, the off-brand ones. But then they said the off-brand ones work just as well as the name brand ones. So if you really want to just save a coin, Go to Costco and get the big joint of the off-brand of the off-brand one, which is just like the on-brand one. So anyway, all that kind of good information. Of course, a list of all the things you should you should avoid in terms of food. Um, what kind of drinks? What kind of plastics? What kind of? I mean, it's really intense. It's a lot of information out there, and they confirmed it. It was like, yeah, she's definitely pregnant. Because again, like I said, you know, I was freaking out, kind of concerned, like, I don't know about this. And at this point, we hadn't told our parents yet. Um, I really wanted to make sure that we knew we were pregnant for real. Like, the home pregnancy thing, I just feel like sometimes they can mess up. You know what I mean? We've heard of false positives plenty of times at home pregnancy tests. And yes, I know the likelihood of taking eight of them and all of them being false positives is just unlikely as hell um I don't know I still just needed the doctor to tell me okay <laughs> I still needed to go to the doctor's office and they needed to confirm it still was not enough for me just because I took that many we spent a lot of money on home pregnancy tests because I was that pressed I really was I still have them <laughs> so then at that point it's kind of like all right, so what should we do now, all right? Like, should we say something now? Or should we wait until it's closer to my birthday? And just to kind of give you an idea of the timeline, um, the first doctor's appointment was earlier in May, and my birthday is um, at, towards the end of May. So after that uh, initial appointment, we um, got set up with um, getting my lab work done. So basically, when they do the lab work, they take hella blood from you, okay? <laughs> I was not prepared, per se, like, with the how many tubes of blood they were going to take. Like, I knew they were going to take a sufficient amount of blood. But, my goodness, I had no idea that it was going to be that much. Now, when I say they took blood, I do, I am not exaggerating. I think it was, it was about, it was at least six tubes. It might have been eight, but it was at least six that I think I can remember because they had all different color rubber tops on them. And the tubes were like, you know, this long. Some of them were thicker. Some of them were skinnier. And they were all for different things. My next appointment with the doctor's office um, wasn't actually scheduled until my actual birthday. So that seemed like, okay, that's pretty cool because the whole point of the next um, appointment was so that we can get the first ultrasound so I'm thinking like wow this is really cool you know um, 
I'll get an ultrasound picture or something, some type of uh, concrete confirmation that yes, there's a baby in there, which would be on my birthday and I get to share it with my parents because I will have told them by then. So it'll all be great, it'll all be fun, right? And so when my birthday came, it was time for the ultrasound. So go in to uh, see my doctor and she was really super nice. Um, it was very important to me to pick a practice that was ran by women. Um, I just feel more comfortable with women and I found a practice in Palm Springs that is all women. So it was really, it's really dope. So I had to sit up on the little exam table. And um, when she came back in, after I undressed or whatever, mind you, yes, John is there with me. Um, so we're all sitting in there and uh, she came back in to let me know that um, my HCG levels were actually a lot lower than she would have liked for it to be a complete healthy pregnancy. I don't know how far off I was, but I know that my levels were still kind of pretty high for it to, too high, like way too high for it to be considered non-pregnant, but like way too low for it to be a good healthy pregnancy. Now, when she said that, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was not super duper surprised because I did experience bleeding and I let her know that before she um, started doing the ultrasound and all that. Like I tried to be as transparent with my doctor as much as possible. We proceed with the ultrasound and my doctor is kind of not saying much. Like she's looking and looking and she tried doing my ultrasound both ways. Now there's two ways to do it. There's on, you know, on your stomach, and then there's what they call transvaginal. So they take the probe gel on there, of course they put the protective thing on it first, and then they put the, the gel on there, and then they kind of stick the tip inside of your lady parts so that they can get like a real close-up view of, you know, it's just basically a different angle of being able to see inside of where your womb is. And she's looking and she's looking and she's not confirming anything. And so she says, you know, I really want to send you guys down to Palm Springs to go to see our specialist. So I'm like, okay. So we go down to Palm Springs to see the specialist. She does the same thing. And then she lets us know um, right then and there. This is still my birthday, mind you. Okay, let's not forget that this is my birthday. And she lets me know right then and there that she doesn't see any signs of an embryonic sac. And um, she looked all over on purpose because she did want to make sure that it's not an ectopic pregnancy. So she was able to put my mind to rest where that was concerned. And I didn't even have to, you know, ask her. She, you know did that on her own, just making sure that she looked everywhere she could possibly look where a sack could have fallen or gone and um, or slid into or what have you. And there was nowhere to be found. So that's pretty much the end of the pregnancy story itself.